you're supposed to protect your kids, but when you fail at that responsibility, the state, our laws, and police have a duty to step in. But in the case of a young Georgia girl, all those safety nets failed her and gave her attacker time and space to continue to abuse her. School was one of those few consistent places Sophie could go and enjoy just being a kid. It was a place she could eat, play, and laugh with other fifth graders. And for a few hours a day, get a break from her unstable home life. And she's very special. All of them are, but she was born premature, yellow jaundice. That was then. On this particular day, the little girl is nine. We're calling her Sophie to protect her. Your granddaughter has been through so much. She has. And for her to keep living and be strong, she has an angel with her. Police were also with her February 2016 as she got off the school bus into her grandmother's van. All of a sudden, the well, police department surrounds me. Sophie had realized during sex education class that the man who was touching her at home was actually sexually abusing her. She told her elementary school administrators. They alerted police, and officers were now speaking to her grandmother. What did they tell you exactly? That she claimed that he had touched her. He was 34-year-old Nicholas Dion Thrash. He was Sophie's mother's live-in boyfriend. There was never a sign at all of any kind of child molestation. After the interviews with her, I, I, I knew that he had done something. Hogansville Police Investigator Jeff Shepard remembers taking over the case from Grantville Police because this house, where Thrash was abusing little Sophie, was just minutes from his police station. What made this one so believable? How does a nine-year-old make something up that graphic and traumatic? As Lieutenant Shepard and social workers with the Division of Family and Children's Services were busy making sure Sophie is physically okay, Thrash disappears. And it was, it was as if he fell off the face of the earth. Where is Nicholas Thrash? Uh, Mom says that, that she hasn't seen him, she can't get him on the phone. Uh, we know during the interviews that the, the children say that Mom's talking to him on the phone. It was Lieutenant Shepard's first sign that Sophie's mother would become one of the biggest obstacles in his investigation. Mom did not even come to the house for the search warrant. But Lieutenant Shepard and his team went inside and found clothes, blankets, and underwear in Sophie's room, clear with the DNA evidence. But Mom still wanted the case dropped. But Mom was had started then. You know, I, I, this this case. You know, my daughter's. You know, I don't think she's telling the truth. There was a defects order saying Sophie needed to be kept away from Thrash. Her mother still drove her hundreds of miles out of state to reunite with Thrash in Indiana before defects could stop her. Sophie and her brother were once again sleeping under the same roof with her abuser, this time in this house in Indiana. Grandma waited, hoping they would come back. During that time, Lieutenant Shepard was also waiting for the DNA test results. Because at the time, we, we didn't have a warrant on paper yet because there's, there's believing somebody, but then there's getting the evidence to get the warrant. The wait gave Thrash the space and time he needed to continue abusing Sophie outside Georgia. Maybe I got some, some tunnel vision on the investigation. I didn't put a rush on the DNA. The test results did eventually come back. Almost two years later, it confirmed Thrash had been raping the nine-year-old in this Troop County house. But it was too late. By then, he had raped her multiple times again in Indiana, and she was now pregnant with the 34-year-old's baby. He is a sick individual, very sick, very, very sick. Who hurts a baby that way? Who? He's robbed her of her entire childhood. Faith, since we published Sophie's story on 11alive.com, we've heard from people all over the country concerned about her. How's she doing? You know, we've been trying to get those answers for weeks now, and I finally got in touch with her grandmother this week. The good news is Sophie is doing so much better. She's finally out of the mental health hospital and is getting ready to reunite with her child who is in foster care in Indiana. Sophie turns 13 this year, and she's optimistic about her future. <laughs>